speaking on the subject the profit of service like you know last Sunday we began on the subject and we we're meant to look at that but um, we couldn't the profit of service Exodus chapter 23 verse 25 to 26 he said, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' precious name. Our objective is very simple. To understand the profitability of service. There are three things I want to say by way of introduction. Number one. Seeking and serving God. Are gameful adventures of life. They are not wasteful endeavors of life. Seeking and serving God are gameful adventures of life. They are never wasteful endeavors. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. God speaking said, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. Seeking and serving God are gainful adventures of life. They are not wasteful endeavors. God has never called anybody to waste their life. He has never called anybody or he has never engaged anybody to waste their lives. Never. Second, God is never a user of people. He is a raiser of people. A maker of people. Even when we say use me Lord, it's not use in the sense of the way the people of the world use people and dump them. God is never a user of people. He is a raiser of people. A maker of people. Please let it be clear. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. He said unto them, Peter and Andrew his brother, he said, follow me and I will make you. I will make you. I will make you. I will make you. The meaning of that is, God is not trying to see how he can profit from your life. He's trying to see how he can profit your life. He's not trying to see how he can profit from my life. He's trying to see how he can profit my life. Because God can do without us. It is we that can't do without him. When they were screaming and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The scribes and the Pharisees told them, they said, tell your disciples to keep quiet. They said, no. If these hold their peace, I can raise stones to take their place. See, I, 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 it is their privilege for them to be involved. Not that they are indispensable. Luke chapter 19 verse 37 to verse 40. If they hold their peace, I raise stones. So it is our privilege to be involved with God. Not God's own privilege. And thirdly, so God 
seeking and serving God are gainful adventures of life. They are not wasteful endeavors. God is never a user of people. He's a raiser of people, a maker of people. And thirdly, God is a rewarder of labor. A rewarder. He's a rewarder of labor. He does not just remember your labor. He rewards your labor. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. The Bible said, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed to us his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. For God not to reward you or to remember that you have labored for him is called unrighteousness. He says he's not unrighteous. It will be unrighteousness with God. To engage your services for him without reward. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder. He is a rewarder. Do you remember the God who said, He commands a curse. On anybody who uses his neighbor's services without wages. That God cannot break his own principle. Eh? In, in Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 13. He said, woe is the man. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness. That and his chambers by wrong. That uses his neighbor's service without wages. Huh? That's why he said God is not unrighteous to, 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 to seek to engage you in his service and then leave you empty handed. That God cannot break his principles. This is important for us to know so that we discard the volunteers' mentality to kingdom service. There is a mentality of I am just a volunteer. A mentality of I'm just trying to see how I can help God or help church. Or what I can contribute. How I can assist. Let that be discarded. It is a covenant of service. A covenant that has obligations. Both from the covenantor and the covenantee. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Now let us go further. Having said all this, what then is the reward of service? What is the profit of service? Number one, supernatural supplies. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. Supernatural supplies. Some th that was Exodus 23, 25. And then Psalm 35 verse 27. He said, let them shout for joy. And be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yeah, let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Which has pleasure in the supernatural supplies of his servant. The prosperity of his servant. Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they obey and they serve him. Serve him, serve him, serve God, serve God. They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they obey and they serve him, if they obey and they serve him. Luke chapter 22 verse 35, he said, when I sent you without pause and without script, I sent you. You went out to serve me. You, did you lack anything? And they said nothing. Supplies. Listen, note this. First, the service of God qualifies people for the supplies of God. The service of God qualifies people for the supplies of God. And secondly, to be involved in his work is to be qualified for his wages. Qualified for his wages. Qualified 
for his wages. That is, you already have a work as a civil servant, as a military personnel, and you are doing something, but you, you, you realize that even that which you are doing in that civil service or business world is to give you a platform to serve God. You are doing what you are doing as a service to God, and God practically places you on a salary. For many years of my life, stepped into pastoring this church without salary. And it has remained from day one till tomorrow. And I notice that every single year, there is something like an average that God places me on. And that average, that is, that is in that, this is the, ridge, the realm. There is a way it happens. That is, I sat at home from January to December. I didn't go anywhere to preach anywhere for anybody to give me honorarium. Or I traveled anywhere. It, didn't, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change nothing. I, I, I go to campus where I, I went to preach. And what they gave me as offering is not enough for airfare. And I return the money back to them. This is my seat to you. It still doesn't change anything. The payer is still paying permanently. And it didn't start now. Even when we didn't enter full-time ministry. There is super... Now, you need to know this so you can know what to demand on. You need to know what the benefits of your service are. So you can know what to trust God for. And it is beyond finance. Now, let's go. Supernatural supplies. Number two, divine health and vitality. Divine health and vitality. Exodus 23 and in verse 25. He said, you shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. He said, and I will take sickness from the midst of you. From the middle of you. From inside you. I will take sickness from out of your liver. And take sickness from out of your heart. And take sickness from out of your kidney. And take sickness from out of your prostate. And take sickness from the midst, from the middle of you. Is part of the package of service. Moses was called the servant of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and in verse 5. Moses, the servant. So, this, so Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab. According to the word of the Lord. How was he when he died? Verse 7. Moses, that servant of the Lord. Moses, in Exodus chapter 7, was, verse 7, was 120 years old when he died. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7. His natural force was not abated. And his eye was not dim. He, he, he ended in strength, in health, in vitality. He was 120 years old when he passed. And what was his qualification? Moses, the servant of the Lord. I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. John chapter 15 and in verse 2. He said, everyone who bears fruit, everyone who Every branch in me, I see to you, I think you need to wake up very fast. John chapter 15 verse 2. He is the vine. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that he may bring forth much fruit. You see, if you are fruit bearing, if you are productive in my vineyard, I will purge you. I will remove from you anything that is hindering your fruitfulness. I will deliver you from what is preventing you from serving, serving me with your strength and with your vigor. What are we talking about? First, to be involved in his service is to attract his servicing. God services those who serve. The way you service a vehicle. The way the owner services an equipment. The service of God connects people to the strength of God. When you serve, he supplies you strength. He supplies you strength. And also, divine health is a package of, of the kingdom employment benefit. When you go, when you go, to organizations to work, there are, there are packages they give you. I think that one of those packages is what some of us are enjoying. And you do all, all manner of things, you preach all manner of preachings, you do everything, you write all manner of writings, every single thing, and yet energy is intact. 
And by the mercies of God, if Jesus tarries to come in 20, 30 years' time, the, the energy will not, will not fade because I saw it in Scripture. Caleb said, as I was 40 years ago, so I am now. My strength is intact for war. Hallelujah. That is divine health and vitality. Number three is distinction and worth. Distinction and worth. In Numbers, that is, when you serve God, he allocates you a certain level of distinction, dignity, distinction. Numbers chapter 18, verse 6 to 7. God was speaking concerning the, the Levites. He said, and I behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel. I set them apart. To you, they are given as a gift, as an asset for the Lord. To do the service of the tabernacle of the, of the congregation. They are given as a gift. I set them apart. To step out for God is to stand out in life. That is what that scripture is saying. Is to stand out in life. The way of service is the way of stardom. The way of service is the way of shining. Listen. When you agree to serve, you are no longer qualified to be a generational concern. When you agree to serve, you are established as a generational asset. In Malachi chapter 3, verse, verse 17 to 18, Malachi 3, 17 to 18, and, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, when I make up my jewels, they shall be mine. And you shall return in verse 18 and differentiate, distinguish between him that between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth it, serveth him not. When we were younger and following the Lord, people were laughing at us and mocking. They thought we were wasting our time, wasting our lives. But today the wastage is fully justified. The difference is clear. You stand out. So supernatural supplies, divine health and vitality, distinction and worth. Number four, deliverance and liberty. Deliverance and liberty. Deliverance and liberty. Let my people go that they may serve me. To decide to serve is to decide to be free. Let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus chapter 4 verse 23. And if you will not let them go, I will kill your sons. And I say unto you, let my son go that, they may, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son. Even your firstborn. God is ready to kill anything that stands in the way of the one who wants to serve. Am I communicating at all? Listen. Kingdom service is a deliverance tool. You need to know this so that you don't think it is only fasting until you almost die that can send you, set you free from ancestral curses or from generational curses or from spirit husband or wife. It's a deliverance tool. Let my people go that they may serve me. And if you will let them go, I will kill your sons. Am I speaking to anybody here at all? Now, I mean, it, it is all over scriptures. Exodus chapter 7 verse 16. I can show you several of this. Where, and thou shalt say unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus chapter 8 verse 1. Let my people go that they may serve me. And the Lord God spake unto Moses. Go to Pharaoh and say unto him. Thus say the Lord. Let my people go that they may serve me. I speak to somebody here. As you commit yourself to the service of the Lord. Whatever will not let you go shall go for you now. 
whatever will not let you go shall be laid to rest I prophesy distinction I prophesy divine health and vitality I prophesy supernatural supplies if you believe that shall the loudest amen In 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 3, we see the dimensions of deliverance. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and ash terror from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only. And what will he do if you serve him? He will deliver you. He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Serve him only. Serving him is your deliverance tool. Daniel chapter 3 and in verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar was giving tes testimony about Shadrach. He said, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants servants, delivered servants. To be a servant is to be qualified for deliverance. Am I speaking to anybody here at all? The ancestral causes of my father's house can't follow me. Generational forces of my lineage cannot follow my life. They can't. What hinder others in my lineage, in my territory can because I dash myself to God. Sins, not now. They can't stop me. They can't hinder me. And hear me, everyone who is like that here, what is stopping others in your family is helpless against you right now. Say the loudest, amen. Those are the four we are going to deal with in the service, but let me go over supernatural supplies, divine health and vitality, distinction and what deliverance and liberty. Now, there are others. Number five is divine life and longevity. I will look at that in the next service. He said, the number of your days I will fulfill. That was Exodus chapter 23 and in verse 26. Divine life and longevity. Number six is honor and dignity. He that waits on his master shall be honored. According to Proverbs chapter 27 verse 18. We'll deal again with that in the next service. Honor and dignity. There is a level of honor that is upon those who serve that the world cannot understand. Number seven is supernatural fruitfulness. There shall be nothing barren among you, nor cast their young. Again, I'll look at that in subsequent service. That was Exodus chapter 23, verse 26 as well. Supernatural fruitfulness. And then there is the anointing. The anointing. Service attracts the oil. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil. Have I anointed him? That was Psalm 89 verse 20. We'll look at that subsequently. And then number nine is divine preservation. Preservation. Divine preservation. Preservation from danger. We already saw Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. We'll look at all this in detail in subsequent services. But for you to have an overall view of what we're going to deal with today in service. 17 and 18. And I will spare them as one spared his only son that served him. I will spare them. Where others are wasted, I will interrupt. Spare them. Number 10 is divine presence. As they went, the Lord went with them. They went to serve and God went with them. That was Mark chapter 16 verse 20. The Lord went with them. Ordinary people look for God but God is attached to the servant. 11. Divine direction. The master speaks to those who serve. <laughs> Am I communicating at all? So these are fringe benefits of service. Divine direction. God spoke to me about marriage on the ground of serving him. On that ground. I want to show you who should be your, life, your partner in life and ministry. So that you don't make mistakes. 
I said, I don't, I, I don't want you to miss it. On the ground of service, not on the ground of I want to marry. On the ground of service, divine direction. You can look at that. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Again, we'll read that in the last service. Was that number 11? And finally, number 12. Eternal rewards. Eternal rewards rewards. Paul said, I'm ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Henceforth is laid for me the crown of... Right, let, let, let's, let's look at that. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. He said, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord. Not just in this world, but in the world to come. Eternal rewards. These are many fringe benefits of kingdom service. Don't forget, God is not trying to profit himself from your life. He wants to profit your life. Question, now what is my counsel? Philippians chapter 1 verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Number one, determine to live for God. Determine to live for God and to serve God with your life while you have both time and strength. It's very heavy. Determine to live for God and serve God with your time while you have determined to live for God and serve God with your life while you have both time and strength. For to me to live is Christ. For as long as I have life, I am donated and death becomes gain. For those who don't live for Christ, death is not gain. Eternal loss. For those who didn't live for God, dying equals regrets. To die is only gain for those who lived for God. To die is only ben, is only gainful for those who live. That is number one. And number two, avoid the temptations that hinder effective service. Anybody who was not in the service on Wednesday, I'd like you to pick the message that we preached on the temptations that hinder effective service. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. He said, we should not be tired or be weary of doing well for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Temptations. I'm going to recap on it very, very quickly. Temptation number one is the temptation and the ICT can help us with all those points so that those who are not in service can receive. Is the temptation not to go far with God. It's a temptation. Where the devil makes you feel like, oh no, don't, 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 don't go too far. That was a temptation Pharaoh confronted Israel with. In Exodus chapter 8 verse 27 to 28. When they say, let us go and serve. And he said, no, you can go, but don't go very far. The temptation not to go far with God. Where people look at you and say, you want to carry church on your head? Don't be too serious. Don't be a fanatic. Don't carry church on your head. Don't kill yourself. Take it easy. God understands. Number two is the temptation. To serve God without your loved ones. The temptation to serve God alone. To go the journey alone.
temptation not to take others along, especially your loved ones. Where you are just there serving God and no other person. That was the second temptation that they faced in Israel. Number three was the temptation to serve God without cost. The money was not money. I mean, Pharaoh told them, Leave your flock behind, leave your resources behind. In Exodus chapter 10, verse 24 to 26, you can go into the wilderness, but leave your things behind. The devil doesn't, doesn't care how much you serve God for as long as your resources are not involved. Number four was the temptation of comparing your commitment to God with that of others. Comparing your commitment. Well, uh, 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 the Bible says if we compare ourselves with ourselves, we are not wise. Everybody is not, I mean, I, 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 I can't be the only one that is doing everything in church or doing everything in my department. Everybody has left the work for me. That was how they left the work for David. And God anointed him to be king of Israel. Avoid this temptation of comparing your commitment. What I am doing for God, others are not, even all even other people who are not serving God the way I'm serving God, they, are, they, are, they seem to be more successful. Number five was the temptation of weariness in service. You got tired. Nobody notices me. Nobody appreciates me. What I expect from serving God, I haven't seen. Other people who are not even serving God like I am doing uh, seem to be more successful. And then you get tired. It's a temptation. Number six was the temptation of waiting for perfect conditions. Oh, let me get married first, then I'll serve God very well. Let me get children first, then I'll serve God very well. Let me get, let me, let me get admission first, then I'll serve God very well. He said, if you wait for perfect conditions, according to the Living Bible version of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4, you will never get anything done. That is a temptation. And number seven was the temptation of offense. The temptation of offense. Where people, they, they have, people are talking against me. They don't like me in the church. People are misrepresenting me without a cause. They misinterpret my actions and my motives. There is a gang up against me. They are insensitive to my needs. I, was, I had the problem in the department. Nobody cared. The Bible said offenses will surely come. But woe to the man by whom the offenses come. For as long as we live in this world, somebody will offend you. Maybe at the parking space, they may offend you. Maybe at the entrance, they may offend you. But that is not sufficient to discard your service to God and your commitment to God. Determine that while you have life and have time, you will spend yourself for God. Am I communicating? Is God speaking to anybody here? And determine that the temptations that reduce people's commitment to God will never be your portion. I prophesy to somebody here today the grace to serve God passionately. The grace to serve God effectively. The grace to serve God heartily. That grace is released upon you right now. And this moment I prophesy the benefits of service, the dividends of service, the yield of service shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. Stand up on your feet and lift up your hands and give him the praise.